I got the W. I didn't get the W like I wanted or perform like I wanted, but at the same time, uh, it's five years and I think two months since my last fight. And uh, yeah, so I, I'm very excited to get the win because I did exactly what I wanted to do. And thank you to Danny from Bellator, uh, the PR guy helping us get the word out. Um, and Bellator as an organization, and Spike, like it's been such a great reception from people. And ah, it's awesome, man. I'm, I'm going to be able to do so much more in Congo because of this fight. I was going to say, talk about the reception that you did get because I was impressed as well. I mean, just how wide-reaching the coverage was. Was it a little bit overwhelming at all? Or did, did you welcome it all? What was that like for you? I was very welcoming. Um, was it overwhelming? I mean, getting used to that from, like, being in the jungle, like, it's a lot different. Uh, it's two different worlds, and if I ever experience culture shock, it's here. It's not there. Um, but I would say that the reception was, was overwhelming in the best way possible, the most positive way possible. Um, however, uh, yeah, I, I'm just so excited to see what good comes from it. Um, so I'm going to keep fighting my heart out and getting better. That's one thing. After this fight, I'm going back to the drawing board, getting better, getting back on my wrestling, getting back on my jiu-jitsu, getting guys to the ground. Um, and, and, and being able to stand for three rounds, that was uh, – and, and go all three rounds after being out five years, two months, I think it's a, kind of an accomplishment in itself. Definitely. So I was going to say, it did look like at the end of the fight that you were a little bit unhappy. That you, I mean, it, but it was kind of a, a gut check, grinding type fight. So, I mean, do you take any pleasure in that, or, or are you disappointed overall? I, I can't. I shouldn't say that I'm disappointed overall. Obviously, as an athlete and a competitor, you always want to do better. However, um, the reason I stepped in tonight was was for my family um, in the Congo, and so. Uh, one of the most awesome things, uh, the director of, of implementation for Water 4, he was here tonight. He was sending them on WhatsApp, one-minute clips, and our well-drilling team of, of 17 guys um, and, and even more were, were surrounded at 3.30 in the morning watching the fight. And we got videos sent back of them celebrating, them crying, um, them just so happy. And they're going to be able to take that into the forest to my pygmy family. And um, I, I wish I was there to do the dancing with them. You hit him some, with some really big shots, some really big knees. Were you at all surprised that he just didn't go down? I'm kind of surprised that I think my knees as swollen as his face. Uh, uh, yeah, I, 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 I thought that I was landing him pretty flush, uh, at least some of them for sure. Not all. Um, but, yeah, he took some shots, and uh, afterwards both his eyes were swollen. Um, he had cuts over both his eyes, and I, I feel like I rocked him. But um, at the same time, like, I need to – to, to tune things up, tune them up to, to get better, um, and then I'll be able to finish guys in those positions. Obviously, the, the very long layoff. After being in there, is there anything that makes you feel that you do or don't want to continue doing MMA? Is this something that you're back, you're going to fight? I'm back. I'm back, and I'm, I'm going to do it until, um, until I feel like I'm done but, uh, or, or accomplish what I wanted to accomplish. And, for me, I know after this fight, maybe people would say, I don't know if he's in Bellator title contention, you know, but I want to get there. I do want to get there. I want to chase that down because with a bigger platform, more people uh, pay attention to, to what's important. And um, I would say that obviously fighting is important. It's one of my greatest passions, but what I'm doing outside is so much more important. And so if I can use this platform and go for another five, seven years, you know, seven years, I'm 35. And you look at the top guys in the world, and they're 35, 37, um, 33. So I got time. And so maybe these next two years, three years, maybe I need to really uh, fine tune things, get better, develop better technique, um, better conditioning, um, and then I can make a run. So was, that, was the plan always to come back to MMA, or was there something that just clicked for you at some time where you're like, I think I can go back and do this and kind of make people aware of the things I'm doing? For the first year, I was struggling, um, struggling with not being a fighter. Uh, that was my identity, my purpose, my significance. Uh, it was where I found my value. Um, but then once I found a greater purpose and value uh, and focusing on that, I was like, you know what? Fighting's not that important, but, um, I, but it's my passion. I love it. And so now I don't have to do one or the other like I'd always thought. I can do both we can do more and make more of an impact in the Congo. So I want to keep rolling with this thing.
Justin, carry around a copy of your book right now. What does yeah. what does that feel like to actually have the product in your hand? And, and now that you got it, does that mean that it's that it's available and out there yet? You know, this is uh, they said top secret because it's the first one in print, um, and uh, yeah, so it comes out September fifteenth. Really excited about it. I think it's going to encourage a lot of people, whether they're I don't know teenagers going through bullying like I did, or they're dealing with substance abuse or depression like I did, or maybe they're looking for a greater sense of purpose or even personal faith like. I think it's got a, a good um, bit of everything. Um, but, yeah, it's awesome. Uh, I'm just pumped that this is the first one. That's uh, at an orphanage in Congo. Uh, all the parents were, were basically killed or, or, or brutal stuff. But, um, but being able to see, like, there's ways we can still bring joy to kids. And being able on the back, like, that's a water well. That was our fifth or sixth water well we drilled uh, a couple days ago where we cranked out number 25. And um, our team, after Matt gets back to Congo, they're going to keep uh, keep drilling. And, um, and, 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 yeah, so to be able to empower the locals and be able to take my hands back and kind of be like, hey, I'm not the hero of this thing. Maybe I got a book, but I want people to see the, the great, amazing people in Congo that are doing this, that are, that are rolling with the pun punches, that are, that, are, that are bigger and better fighters than I am. Um, that are out there in the field constantly um, and that are being the answer to their own country's problem. Um, that's, that's our method, that's our motto is we want to empower and in inspire first, but train up, give them knowledge and empower them to do it for themselves. And so by me coming back, it kind of, it was, it was uh, tough because I was like, you know, I, I'm, I'm so involved, I'm such a part of this, you know, and um, I was there for the first 13 water wells. How do I take my step back and take my hands off? But if the thing can't outlive me, um, then I didn't do a good job. If it depends on me, then I didn't do what I was supposed to. If, if it can run without me, if I can be the spark plug in that engine, and then now they're, they're about to double what, what I was there and did, um, like that's amazing, that's what it's all about. Thank you guys very much.